The ebon morrow cut through the calm, moonlit waters like a silent shadow, her black sails billowing softly in the wind. Captain Elara Thorne stood at the helm, her gaze fixed on the horizon where a strange ghostly glow shimmered in the distance. The crew murmured uneasily, casting wary glances at the pale spectral light. Elara, are you certain about this? Her first mate, Samuel Crow, asked, his voice a low rumble. He was a burly man with a scarred face, more accustomed to combat than the creeping dread that now gripped him. We've all heard the stories about this place. I've heard them, Elara replied, her voice steady, despite the cold knot of fear twisting in her gut. But if the rumors are true, there's a fortune waiting on that ship. The ship in question was the Astaroth, a legendary ghost ship said to haunt these waters. Decades ago, it had vanished without a trace, carrying a cargo of gold, gems, and a mysterious artifact known only as the Eye of Rail. Since then, it had been sighted only in fleeting glimpses, a ghostly vessel drifting aimlessly, crewed by the damned souls who had perished aboard. But it wasn't just the promise of treasure that drew Alara. Her father, Captain Dorian Thorne, had been obsessed with finding the Astaroth, chasing its elusive wake for years before he disappeared. She had inherited his obsession, and was determined to succeed where he had failed. There she is, a voice called from the crow's nest, breaking through her thoughts. Off the port bow! All eyes turned towards the glowing apparition that had appeared through the mist. The Astaroth seemed to float on the air, her tattered sails glowing with an eerie blue light, her hull dark and rotting. A sense of dread settled over the crew as the ghost ship came into view, her deck covered in a faint, shifting mist. Ready the long boat, Ilara ordered, her voice firm. We're going aboard. A murmur of fear rippled through the crew, but they obeyed, lowering the boat into the water. Elara, Samuel, and a handful of the bravest crew members climbed in, rowing slowly towards the spectral ship. As they approached, the temperature dropped sharply, and an unnatural silence fell over the sea. The only sound was the creak of the oars, and the soft lapping of water against the hull. When they reached the side of the Astaroth, Elara hesitated, feeling the weight of unseen eyes upon her. Captain, Samuel's voice was tense. This doesn't feel right. Stay close, she said, ignoring the fear clawing at her heart. She grabbed a rope and swung herself onto the deck, landing lightly on the ancient weathered planks. The others followed, their faces pale in the ghostly light. The deck was eerily empty, the mist swirling around their feet like cold fingers. There was no sign of life, no sound, except the faint, almost imperceptible whisper of the wind through the rigging. Elara's eyes swept over the ship, searching for anything that might explain the supernatural glow. Fan out, she ordered quietly. Search for the hold, the treasure must be below. They moved cautiously, the silence pressing in around them. The ship felt wrong, as if it were suspended in time, trapped between worlds. Alara's heart pounded as she made her way to the main hatch. She forced it open with a creak, revealing a dark, gaping maw below. Samuel, with me, she said, gripping her lantern tightly. Together, they descended into the bowels of the ship, the steps creaking ominously under their weight. The air below was thick with the scent of rot and decay. The dim light of her lantern flickered as they moved through the narrow passageways, their shadows dancing on the mold-streaked walls. Every creak of the ship, every whisper of the wind, sounded like a voice, faint and indistinct, murmuring just beyond hearing. Then they saw it. The door to the captain's cabin slightly ajar. Elara's heart leaped. 
She pushed it open, the hinges groaning in protest. Inside, the room was a chaotic jumble of broken furniture, tattered maps, and rusted navigational instruments. But it was the figure slumped over the rotting desk that drew her gaze. A skeletal hand, still clutching a quill, lay on a sheet of parchment, covered in a scrawl of faded ink. Elara's breath caught as she saw the name signed at the bottom. Captain Dorian Thorne. Father, she whispered, a surge of grief and disbelief coursing through her. She reached out, her fingers trembling as she touched the brittle bones. How long had he been here, alone and forgotten? Samuel took a step back, his face a mask of horror. Elara, we need to leave, now! But she was already reaching for the parchment. As her fingers brushed the paper, a cold wind swept through the cabin and the lantern flame sputtered. The whispers grew louder, words forming in the air around them. The eye is cursed, it binds the souls, trapped, never free. The lantern flickered out, plunging them into darkness. Elara's heart raced as she fumbled for a flint, but then a pale, ghostly light filled the room. She turned, and her breath caught in her throat. The cabin was filled with shadows, shifting and coalescing into shapes, faces twisted in agony, eyes hollow and empty. The crew of the Astaroth, damned to an eternity of torment, their souls trapped by the very treasure they had sought. One of the shadows moved forward, its face contorted in a rictus of despair. Turn back, it moaned, the voice echoing through the room like a sigh. The eye, it hungers for more. Elara stumbled back, her mind reeling. The eye of Rail, the artifact her father had sought. It was no mere treasure, it was a curse, a prison for the souls of those who coveted it. And now she understood why the Astaroth was doomed to drift forever, never to find peace. Get out! Samuel shouted, grabbing her arm. We need to get out! They turned and ran, stumbling through the dark, the whispers chasing them, filling the air with words of warning, of despair. They burst onto the deck, the mist thickening around them, the ghostly glow of the ship intensifying. Elara! One of the crewmen called from the longboat, his voice high with panic. Hurry! They scrambled over the side, dropping into the boat just as a low, mournful wail rose from the Astaroth. The ship seemed to shudder, the mist swirling violently as the water around it began to churn. Row! Samuel shouted, his voice raw with fear. Row! Damn it! The men rowed frantically their eyes fixed on the spectral ship as it began to fade, the light dimming, the mists closing in. Elara watched, her heart pounding, as the cursed vessel vanished into the fog, leaving only silence in its wake. They reached the Ebon Morrow, climbing aboard with trembling hands. Elara turned back to the empty sea, her mind still reeling from what she had seen, from the truth she had uncovered. Her father had found the Astaroth, he had found the Eye of Rail, and it had claimed him, just as it had claimed all those before him. We're done here, she said quietly, her voice hollow. Set a course for open waters. As the crew hurried to obey, Elara stood at the railing, staring out at the dark expanse. The weight of her father's legacy, his obsession pressed down on her like a shroud. She had found the ghost ship, but it had cost her more than she had ever imagined. The treasure was real, but so was the curse that guarded it.